that day arrived. I've never thought that I would review a Zenith El Primero because I've never had any connections or interest with the brand. However, this Zenith Chronomaster A305 revival totally turned me upside down. <laughs> A controversial brand and chronograph in my mind. The Zenith El Primero Chronomaster A305 Revival it is a watch that came back from the archives of Zenith, paying homage to the first generations of El Primeros. So the brand was mentioned on the channel due to the occasion and the review of the Hamilton Intromatic Panda talking in depth about the chromatic project, where Movado and Zenith was in competition with Breitling Hoyer, also with Seiko, to create the first self-winding chronograph which happened around 1969. And we know, the name of the reviewed piece is El Primero, meaning that they were the first to create the automatic chronograph caliber, but did they? So just to clarify a bit, the mechanical chronographs were available as wristwatches even since the early 20th century. However, at the beginning of the 60s, the mentioned watchmakers joined their forces and embarked on a race to develop their first self-winding chronograph. So three parties started to develop their own projects, each with its own merits and its own technical vision. That's the beauty of it. So in this battle, according to my research, there were actually three phases. The first phase was when each group announced that they succeeded to create the first self-winding chronograph and here Zenith was the first to announce and name their movement as El Primero. The second phase happened when the brands presented their movements publicly and here Zenith made it first on January 1969. And the third phase and the most important one is where the new watches equipped with these movements were available to purchase on the market. And here Hoyer, Breitling and Hamilton introduced their new chronomatic watches at the press conference which was held on the 3rd of March 1969 simultaneously at 5 p.m. in Geneva and at 11 a.m. in New York City, launching precisely the Hoyer Otavia, Monaco and Carrera, Breitling Top Time, Chronomat and Navi Timer. So Zenith won the race on paper, but the Chronomatic Alliance won the race launching the watches for purchase, with almost 6 months before Zenith, where Seiko started their sales at the beginning of 1970s. And as personal thoughts, I always seen the manufacturer as making big toys for big boys with big wallets. I've never considered the brand accessible, also never liked their modern models, being very similar with Hublot. Also for a long time I associated the brand as being Russian and not at all Swiss. However, the brand historically was so well seen that Rolex decided to onboard the Daytona cases with the El Primero caliber 400. Rolex unveiled the automatic Daytona collection in 1988, swapping the Valjoux based hand wound movement in the favor of the Zenith El Primero self winding movements. These Daytonas being also known today as Zenith Daytona watches, which were around on the market for 12 years until Rolex finally introduced a collection of automatic Daytona watches powered by their first in house chronograph movements. But getting back to our reviewed model, as general specifications we have a stainless steel case that measures 37mm in diameter, with a lug to lug distance of 47mm, with a thickness of only 12.6mm, and 19mm as a lug width. The model ensures 50m war resistance, and on top we have a box sapphire crystal, and on the bottom as well, we have a sapphire on the case back that unveils the beautiful decorated El Primero 400. This is a self-winding caliber with a diameter of 30mm and a power reserve of 50 hours, beating at a frequency of 36,000 BPH, and as a retail the watch is priced somewhere around 8,400 for the leather bracelet or 7,900 for the leather one. And tied up to the price, the finishing of El Primero, it definitely doesn't give you the feeling of owning a premium luxury watch for a 7000 euros price. The overall feeling it just isn't there. I mean I appreciate the fact that they revived the 69 model, making it exactly as it was back in the days. And you can feel the retro vintage aspect, 
has the 69 spec size, it is thin, has a boxed crystal, the leather bracelet is thin and lightweight, but the clasp feels like a piece of metal stamped. And everything feels related to the wearability, the mindset and the craftsmanship of the 70s. But there is a huge difference in quality and experience for example between this El Primero revival and an Omega Speedmaster, priced at the same amount of money. So from my point of view the price is definitely a mismatch for what the brand offers. However, on a positive note, I do have to appreciate the ability and the accuracy of the brand to reissue a vintage piece. Because we have a curved tonneau case shape finished on a beautiful radial brush, which is chamfered on the edges and changing the angle. From the side we are previewing an elegant trapezius shape, which is pretty thin and well optimized that hosts the winding caliber El Primero 400 movement, which is basically the same El Primero invented 50 years ago. So the dial is pretty cool, I think this is a thing of love or hate. The cappuccino dial, as I call it, starts with a brown gradient from the sides to a gold tone towards the center. The warm gradient rhythm being interrupted by the white subdials. So the brand played around with the warm color, adding a chronograph red hand and highly polished indexes, and somewhere at 4 o'clock fitting a small date window, which in my view wasn't necessary, but I have to admit, it is very discreet. Another remarkable thing that I consider is the beauty and the quality unveiled by this caliber El Primero 400. No matter how good or bad is the dial design, the case back of the chronograph will remain the star of the show, especially because El Primero is the movement, not the watch. And in terms of movement finishing, we have Le Cote de Genève motif. We have a beautiful combination between steel, brushed, soleage and polished accents combined with the blued screws purple and the rich gold tones of the cogs. Also the rotor being carefully trimmed, painted and signed by the brand, matching the complex mechanism from the quality point of view. So on the wearability and comfort chapter, this chronograph wears extremely well. The trapezius shape lays down very well on the wrist. It is not heavy, also in the combo with the bracelet does not move too much because of the balanced weight of the case. So things to remember. Maybe El Primero wasn't the first, as a matter of fact, who cares? As long as the brand can offer today such an accurate self-finding heart and a well-decorated mechanism, being exactly the same movement created 50 years ago. And once again, shame on me for daring to misjudge such a brand with impact in the history of watchmaking. However, the good part is that it succeeded to convince me. The simplicity and the authenticity of this El Cappuccino made me fall in love with it and hopefully at some point, I'll consider buying one. And with goods and bads, El Primero is an icon in the modern horology. By competition, contributed to the development of the first self-winding chronograph. And for this reason, this Zenith El Primero Chronomaster A305 revival will be qualified as a brave beater, taking the position number 30 in the Hall of Fame as being a storyteller, an experience and a great wristwatch to enjoy at any time. And obviously I'm really curious to know how do you see this brand and its mission during these modern times and what do you think about this El Cappuccino? Please let me know in the comments section. So hope you enjoyed this video so far and if you're new here please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much and until next time be brave but stay safe. Thank you.